PR Pro Cannabis Media. Live from the visual radio studios of Performer TV in Quincy, Massachusetts, it's We Talk Live with Kurt Dalton from Cannabis.net and Jimmy Young from ProCannabisMedia.com. We're here in our home state of Massachusetts. Did you ever think we'd be talking about cannabis as a legal commodity? And they're even finding tombs now in Egypt um, and in and, and like Mongolia that have cannabis na- laid next to the uh, sarcophagus. So, so they're not getting buried with get, their bongs? Yeah, no, not, there are no <laughs> bongs back there, just a plant, I guess, you know. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Welcome to We Talk Live. I'm Jimmy Young. And I'm Kurt Dalton. And we have a great show planned tonight. We have some very special in-studio guests. We have some great guests on the phone. And there's never a dull moment in the cannabis industry. Lots of news going on. Of course, everybody's concerned about the big vaping crisis that the CDC has recognized. We also understand that there's a historic local group called New, New Can Group that just won a host agreement without a place to actually have a dispensary out of. So that's kind of historic. First time ever. First time ever, precedent setting. And uh, one of their uh, principals will be joining us in studio as well. We also have a couple of scientists uh, to join us to explain a little bit about what goes into concentrates, how they go from a flower into uh, a liquid form, all sorts of really neat stuff. And uh, we also have somebody who is involved with the Cannabis Wedding Expo. His name is Phil Wolf from Colorado. He'll be joining us as well. But the reason why we're all excited to hear tonight is we have a very special in-studio guest. We're going to get to him after we hear from some of his special fish. He said. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back. A man who needs no introduction is Roger Berkowitz, the CEO of Legal Seafood. He joins us in studio. Roger, thank you so much for coming in tonight. My, my, my pleasure, Jim. Kurt, you know, if you had asked me a few years ago, would I be sitting here today? The answer would be probably not. Oh, no. We all feel that way, especially in our home state of Massachusetts. Who ever thought we'd see this day mm. where cannabis is a legal commodity and people are using it medicinally and now for adult use as well can we talk a little bit about those commercials roger because i I am fascinated with whose idea was it to come up with this clever campaign you know it's interesting because uh, we have a very sort of edgy advertising group we work with out of uh, new york city uh they have a first amendment attorney on staff and and over the years we've worked with them oh gosh you know going on 10 12 years now and you know we we, we're we don't shy away from things that might be considered a little provocative uh so we've done you know we've sort of gone after the environmentalists but you know in a way that sort of gives another side not that we don't believe in environmentalism we certainly do uh we've had some fun with religion uh we've had some fun with politics so what happened was we were we were having a meeting and some people noticed coming out of uh out of logan airport a huge billboard that says weed is legal <laughs> and a, and of course and actually it was, it, believe it or not it was in our style font so oh. people connected the dots right away Way, so let's have some fun with this, and that's what happened. And you know, I, and and it's very interesting to me because I, I treat everybody with the same thing. I, I treat people with respect. And when I saw the campaign, I I immediately said, "Wow, look at what Legal Seafood is doing. They are actually recognizing the fact that the world has changed. It's a whole new world of weed out there, folks. And here in Massachusetts, it's a legal commodity. And Legal Seafood now has." Given respect to the fact that there is a whole new business in town, there are people that are enjoying this, and I gave you 
big time kudos. I really did. Well, you know, thank you. You know, and, and it's interesting. I, I, I think one of the things that we think about is that our, our demographics are very wide and broad based. And so it's not one group in particular. And so we feel that we really should be appealing to everybody and everyone. You know, we, we want to get our message out there. And, and weed seems to be a, a, a pretty good medium at this particular point. Everybody has an opinion about it, whether they use it or not, right? That, that's correct. That and, is correct. And, and, I, and I give you a lot of respect for that uh kurt you got a question because i've got a whole bunch here but go ahead it it, is there plans for legal to incorporate (laughs) cbd in the future Uh, some uh, of your dishes that was you you know what the obvious one you know that's it's it's a fair question right and uh uh, i happen to be a pretty big proponent of of cbd i i I think that uh you know uh it, it helps me sleep um you know, I think it's good for aches and pains uh, and migraine headaches. I get migraine headaches, and uh, the CBD mitigates that. So, um, you know, could I see a, a you know, a, an opportunity at some point? Um, yeah, I think we need to you know, learn more about it, certainly. But, uh, you know, I'm an advocate of CBD. So the everything tuna may, may have everything. <laughs> may have a little bit of everything in that thing. Uh, perhaps. <laughs> will we see a day where there will be an infused menu? Uh, you know, and again, I'm jumping ahead a good five years from now. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking about uh, the Safe Banking Act that might be voted in the, before the end of the week, if not the end of the month. Um, we, we keep moving in this direction. There's so many bills before Congress right now uh, regarding reform for the cannabis industry and the cannabis laws. Um, do you think we'll ever see a day where there will be an infused menu legal seafood. You know, I, I think it's a possibility. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because, uh, you know, we speak to, uh, you know, I, we're involved uh, with the Harvard School of Public Health, mm-hmm. and so nutrition is very important to us. Uh, I, I come in contact with a lot of doctors, and I keep asking them, you know, what what, what, do, you, what are you seeing? What is, what is your research showing? Um, you know, they, they haven't really weighed in on, on THC, but they, they're starting to weigh in now on CBD, and uh, it's gaining some momentum, uh, at least in medicine medical circles right now um, could uh, so I, I certainly see that um, that realm of possibility in, in the not too distant future there you go would there ever be an opportunity for product Ooh, placement nice. because I know product <laughs> placement is something that you're you, you you value would there be CBD brands I don't know be able to you know work at a show any type uh, I, of advertising I, I, I don't hey by the way before I forget <laughs> I, I want to uh, actually give you guys some, oh uh, here we, uh, we thought we were going to bring so, food to us so, like right so, now so, now we get so, t-shirts so you said product uh, placement yeah. so yeah so so I, I so, oh uh, look at I love it. <laughs> uh, all right, so 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 we can uh, we show go. this up here. It's He's a, got it. There you go. <laughs> and those are fish, but they, you know they're designed to look a bit different. Uh, just, and and yes, you, you can get them at uh, uh, legalseafoods.com uh, if you like. Good nice job, Roger. For you. We <laughs> had a, cus- a custom made, <laughs> embroidered, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a very nice lobster uh, bib that I could uh, also pass over. But no, we're uh, huge fans of the restaurant. If you haven't you. obviously heard or tried Legal Seafood, it's the best seafood restaurant in the world. So, uh, Roger, has there been any blowback from this campaign? You, you know, it's interesting. It, you know, we, we, in some ways, you know, we, we measure the effectiveness of our ads based on the amount of, of blowback and and I think what we try to do is is get ads out there that cause people to think and to weigh in one way or the other and so it becomes a discussion point uh, you know we did something on uh, we were encouraging people to become pescatarians as it were and um, we, so it was sort of like a religious ad and some people thought if you were older over 75 you thought we were asking you to convert from being a Presbyterian <laughs> so so it got yeah, had we gone too far that was kind of the discussion just try to snap her that's all right, we want right, just right, try to snap her right. so, you know the, the same thing so uh, we thought on, on this thing you know it might be uh, we didn't know exactly what was going to happen we, 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 we truly didn't know if there would be a lot of blowback and it's kind of surprising because there's not a lot of blowback so we're thinking huh did we push far enough i I don't know you know but but uh it people seem to be getting a real kick out of it 
And uh, the amount of negative is minuscule from what we initially anticipated. Yeah, there was one negative, and it really pissed me off, and it came from Dan Adams of the Boston Globe. I'm going to be the one who uh, mentions that, because to be honest with you, I have a lot of respect for Dan Adams. I have a lot of respect for the Boston Globe. But what he did in his weekly This Week in Weed column and how he embellished this whole campaign and completely missed the boat when it came, to me, it was a big deal because you... You gave respect to a new community of people you could market to, as opposed to what he said in not so delicate terms, you know, their campaign is saying get wasted on drugs. No, it didn't. Okay? You missed the boat, Dan. Okay? Yeah. 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 I, 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 so I, I, when I read that, I said, oh, this guy's head's in the weeds. Um, but, uh, <laughs> the, it, you know, so, so actually, what, what, what really kind of happened with it is usually it, because uh, media writers like to hear what our next campaign is because they have been somewhat controversial over the years. So the Globe didn't have any media writers at this particular uh, particular juncture. So the uh, the closest thing was Dan, who writes about the cannabis industry, and he does he I mean marketing and whatever is beyond what what, what he thinks about. So right. uh, it was probably a right church, wrong pew. Good good analogy. Yeah, analogy. I like that. Um, can we talk a little bit about climate change? Because sure. I know that is something that is on everybody's mm-hmm. mind. You know, we can certainly get into the vaping thing, and we will in the second half hour of this program. But uh, there's a lot of concern about climate change. I saw the story on the Today Show that Al Roker was walking around the Arctic, and, you know, you see the glaciers uh, breaking, and, and you see the uh, wildlife disappearing. Uh, I know that it's so important for you to somehow or other change this yeah i mean it's uh you know uh, climate change is is happening uh i i have an opportunity um to speak with some of the scientists from noaa uh, I, I sit on this um, uh, committee a marine fisheries advisory committee it, it works with NOAA and the department of commerce and we get briefed periodically by the NOAA scientists. And apparently, um, the water temperatures were supposed to change from between uh, four to six degrees over an 80-year period of time. Mm -hmm. And it really has taken place over a 10-year period of time. And so a lot of the fish, from whatever region you're in, uh, the North Atlantic has typically colder waters. Those fish are migrating north, and we're seeing uh, a lot of uh, southern fish like mahi mahi and croaker coming into the waters here. So climate change is absolutely happening. Uh, one of the solutions outside of, of cutting down on the amount of pollution, of course, uh, is um, uh, more fish farms and and being able to cultivate stocks uh, in the warmer waters, if you will. But uh, it is certainly a concern. Is that another reason why we had so many sharks off, uh, absolutely, off the shore? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, the, the, the sharks, particularly the great whites, uh, you know, feed on seals. The seals are migrating here because the waters are warming up and the sharks follow the food. And that's matter of fact, I follow food, too. I just want to <laughs> say that, but I'm, I'm not a shark. <laughs> Uh, it, it sounds like the future is going to be CBD, mahi mahi, pretty soon at Legal Seafood. <laughs> right. uh, if you put it together, I, and, uh, and also the, the, the feel good food, yes. <laughs> the feel good uh, food. I like that. Um, and another thing that that is an element of the cannabis sativa plant is the hemp side of things, mm-hmm. um, the the non intoxicating plant that looks just like the intoxicating plant, but has under 0.3 percent THC. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of talk about how hemp can help climate change because you can use hemp to get rid of a lot of plastic. Uh, I, I did see an article on that and, and absolutely makes sense. I mean, and right. and, and as, as look, the reality is as those products became available, we'd, be, we'd jump right on that. Absolutely. Hey, I think we have a couple more of the commercials. Can we, uh, Mike, can we roll a couple more of the uh, Legal Seafoods uh, campaign here?
It's welcome to legal. Legal seafood. It, it, embracing the fact that it's now legal in Massachusetts. I, I think it was a brilliant, brilliant campaign. Uh, Roger, you, you. Ha, uh, can you have any? Uh, do you have any anecdotal stories about people who have uh, reached out to you personally about this campaign? You know, it, it's. Uh, I, I guess people are coming up to me, and they it's wild. They may think it's funny. Now, I did get an email from a woman who I who I know and has been a great customer. She's saying, you know, I don't get it. And I go, what, what, what do you mean you don't get it? I, said, I don't get it. What, I, is, is salmon? Is sm- I don't get it. So, and this is a very bright woman. And, 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 and I said, you know, it's this is what... Oh my God! I didn't even realize that it would completely went over my head. <laughs> there you go. So, so it had, we, a lot of the people who are seeing the the ads aren't connecting the dots. And so, what the good news is, someone is telling them. And then they go back and really focus on it. There you go. And I think that's a that's really important too because it is code, kind of. You know, the four twenty is kind of code <laughs> yes. for the universe, right? And yep. we've talked about the origination of it. We know the Louis Pasteur statue at four twenty in the afternoon, and in California, a bunch of guys, you know would meet there and get high, and that was how it all started. I, I, I've actually got to order the 420 Haddock CBD special this week. <laughs> uh, legal. I, it's, it's, it's done. That's going to be where they Actually, we have, <laughs> this is, a, we, we, we actually have a, uh, um, a happy hour, uh, and uh, it starts at 420. Of You're course it does. You're the best. I love that, Roger. Come on. I, I love that. Um, let, let's get back a little bit to, uh, are you... Do you measure ROI on the effectiveness of the campaign? How do you measure that? Or you just look at your week's revenue and say, hey, look at that. We got a bunch. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are different kinds of advertising. Uh, we do more marketing imaging kind of advertising. Of course, when we run ads uh, over a particular period of time, we, we certainly look for a bump. But it's for the overall cumulative effect. It's not, hey, come in and eat the salmon today. Um, we, it's it's more of an imaging kind of scenario. I know you have uh, restaurants outside of Massachusetts. Are mm-hmm. these campaigns running outside of Massachusetts uh, r- or not? Right now, not. Okay. Right now, not. I, I, I think we will start to run them in D.C. coming up. Though. There you go. So I think the Alabama and the Mississippi legal, they'll go, <laughs> no, they'll go on that one yet? <laughs> I don't think they're ready for that just yet. Tuscaloosa legal, sorry. No, no 420 special. Just Hey, uh, one thing that the three of us actually have in common is a uh, affinity for the Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm. Um, and, mm-hmm. and I know I, I was doing some research on you, Roger, and I, I listened or watched or I read uh, another interview. And you have a great story about Red Auerbach that I, I want you to reach back and talk a little bit about it. Because I got to tell you, as a sports guy, okay. meeting Red Auerbach once in my life was still one of the greatest thrills of my life. R- Red Auerbach was one of a kind. Oh, and yeah. I, and I, and I I think I, I had the privilege of knowing him, uh, you know, uh, oh gosh, maybe about 25, 30 years ago when mm-hmm. I first met him. And what I love about Red is is that he said what was on his mind regardless, and you, you had to pay attention and take note. He goes, you may think this is a little thing, but to me it's a big deal. And it usually was a big deal. So there there, there are, are a number of stories about Red. One of them I, I love, and uh, you know, when you could still do, uh, when some restaurants still had smoking allowed mm-hmm. uh, in, in the restaurants, I, and I put in, you know, Red was kind of an iconic character, of course, mm-hmm. and he loved his cigars, so I, I said, no pipe smoking or cigar smoking unless you're Red Auerbach. And so Red would love to come in and at the end of a meal would love to light up. And he had loved it when people came over to him and said, oh, sir, you can't smoke. He goes, hey, take a look at the menu. It says I can, so I am. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls out his ID. Says, I don't think he needed yeah. an ID. Yeah, I'm just saying, not in this town. Right? Not in this town. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, an, another reference to sports, because as you know, I'm still very passionate about it. Um, Eddie Andelman used to say about Massachusetts, it's sports, politics, and revenge. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Now, as we look into the crystal ball about what's going on in this state, as far as the uh, rollout of the cannabis industry, mm-hmm. there's a lot of politics in Involved, and as you might expect, 
maybe a little revenge too. Um, I, do you follow what's going on in the cannabis industry as far as like you know the issuances of these host agreements or licenses? You know, I I, I have to admit I'm more focused on selling fish. Um, but I, I expected that, by the way. You know, I'm a, I'm a fish monger. I get it. I get and, it. And fish has to be fresh. Uh, so I, I I read a little bit of it, but I I must admit I'm not really in, you know uh, in ingrained in the politics of it. That's good. Good good answer too. By the way, that was very very politically correct of you too. Um, so we've talked a little bit about CBD mm-hmm. uh, infused into uh, food. Mm-hmm. Um, do you expect to see it into uh, drinks? You know, one of the uh, companies that uh, we were going to talk to this guy about um, uh, kind of deal with the Constellation brands, to, and, and big liquor now is getting involved on the cannabis side of things. They want to infuse their beers and their liquors with the CBD, the magic, the magic elixir, if you will. Um, it, will that be an easier sell than the food, or a less? Or do you even no? I, I suspect that um, you know infusing an alcohol would be an easier sell because mm-hmm. people are expecting, uh, at least when they have alcohol, some kind of high as a result of it. In addition to tasting good, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens if CBD is in there because you know it's it's it sort of it does enhance you know or or, or decreases the amount of pain. Yes. So. It will be interesting. I, I, I don't have a real read on it yet. We'll have to do a lot of experimenting. That's yeah. right. At yes. this house. But being an iconic brand that's really found a nice way to communicate the message without, you know, the fish doing bong hits and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Have you seen copycats? Do you think iconic brands are going to follow your lead hmm. in this and, and get a creative least offensive way to jump uh, on this you know I, I I think as as we go along you know we, again we you know part of our marketing strategy has always been a little bit provocative so I think once it becomes a bit more mainstream you'll have some acknowledgement more acknowledgement amongst mainstream so I, I suppose that will that, that seems perfect to the next question where we're looking 18 months from now THC has changed to the federal level. I'm going to say that legal is already working on that moment in time. <laughs> when everyone is caught up to you, you're about to do the next jump that no uh, one sees coming. I, I, I don't know. No and, and I, I can't comment on <laughs> Roger, we've been legal a long time. Uh-huh. Okay? You can file that one away. All right? That's okay. And, and happy to do that. Um, another person that I know that uh, I'm pretty sure that we we share in common here is the the late, great Lenny Zakem. Yes. Um, yes. Who yes. was the uh, Northeast director of the ADL for many, many mm-hmm. years. And I got to work with him after I left full-time sportscasting work for, for a period of time. And his brother, Stuart, is a pro-cannabis really? uh, consultant in New York City. And, and a year and a half ago, when I started my podcast, one of the people I ran into was Stuart Zakem. Huh. And I said, I remember walking up to him and, and introducing myself. And he said, yeah, I'm, I'm Stuart Zakem. And I said, are you any relation to Lenny? You know? And he goes, well, he was my older brother. And I went, whoa! I'm like, yeah. he put us together for a reason. And and, you know, he's a PR guy and works with the uh, Marijuana Business Association out of Manhattan oh, interesting. now. But if Lenny was around now, mm-hmm. with all the division mm-hmm. in our world, it, it, we need people like him now yeah. more than ever before. So uh, let me tell you a story about Lenny. And Lenny, as, as we all know from this region and, and, and beyond, is a unique individual. And he did bring people together. And they named our most iconic bridge, the Zakem Bridge, after, mm-hmm. after Lenny, you know, that uh, spanned uh, bridge. Um, so uh, when Lenny was sick, Lenny was a great customer. When, when Lenny was sick, uh, we sort of, a number of us, you know, got assignments. And one of the assignments Lenny gave me, he said, you know, when we, we're going through chemo, uh, we really lose our appetite, but we really need something um, for, our, you know, for our immune system. We need nutrition. Can you be working on something that, you know, enhances uh, our appetite and gets us nutrition? And so, you know, I, I got this assignment and I started doing it through food. Uh, one of the things that we did right after that, and unfortunately he passed and never really got an opportunity to see some of the results of it, is I started working with Ayurvedic doctors out of India. Mm-hmm. And and we started, we, we created something, well, it, it's been out there called Rasam soup and it's made with crushed lentils and and different uh, Indian herbs and spices 
But uh, and we started to actually uh, bring it to folks at um, the Dana Farber Institute, and 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 doctors and patients started to say, "Hey, you know what? Th- we can eat this, and this tastes good, and we know it's good for us." So he was already on that track early on. Yes, he was, and uh, I, I know that he was uh, someone who used it during his chemotherapy. It helped mm-hmm. him through that, and Lord knows we all have stories about people who know that uh, cannabis has changed their lives. It made it easier to get through these horrible radiation treatments and mm-hmm. chemotherapy that, that's out there. And I, th- I don't think anybody wants to deny a cancer patient with anything that will help them get through that time and uh, you know we all know that the science and research now is building up it's why washington dc is looking at this and trying to reform the cannabis laws in the united states and um it's just amazing that massachusetts is leading the way in a lot of this uh efforts and a lot of these efforts you know Mm -hmm. um roger uh i so appreciate you coming in here tonight in so many ways and um it was great to see you and again keep up the good work i i told you this out in the in the lobby i said it is the most consistent food and restaurant experience i ever have at any restaurant it's always good and it's always legal jimmy thank you very much what a great voiceover and i i will also chime in and say uh, you know, Christmas, I get asked, where do you want, where do you want gift certificates? I get five legal gift certificates because I, I will eat there every day the rest of my life if I, have, if, if, if I could. So and, and you'll leave, try it. you'll have a long life if you oh. do that too. I know because, you know, I heard they were high on omega 3s. That's true. That's yes. true. And, yes. and, and, and we know the CBD Mahi Mahi is on its way. So I can't wait. <laughs> thank you, Greg. So uh, again, Roger Berkowitz from Legal Seafood, thank you again for coming in tonight. And we will continue with a second half hour of our program in just a moment. So don't go away because we are are going to be talking about the vaping crisis that has hit the United States. We are pro-cannabis media. Why? Because we're a media company that is pro-cannabis. Pro-cannabis, because those stories are not being told. We are live streaming from events. Hi, everybody. Welcome to day two of the live stream from the New England Cannabis Convention. We are blogging on all topics. We are Partners with Leafly, Weed Maps, Green Flower, MJ Headline News, Sensi Magazine, and The Weed Tube. We are Weekly News Dabs with Jimmy Young. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of News Dabs with Jimmy Young, now reporting for the Pro Cannabis Media Group and ProCannabisMedia.com. From New Orleans, Liz Dameron, Pro Cannabis Media Network. We are listing cannabis-friendly events. We are interviewing cannabis experts on the podcast, In the Weeds with Jimmy Young. You were one of the co-authors of Question 4, which paved the way. Uh, First of all, how did you get picked for that honor? We write laws, regulations, we advocate for them, and um, then we get licenses and we keep them compliant. We are The Cannamom Show with Joyce Gerber. A different way of understanding how cannabis impacts your body, which is very different from alcohol, which I think that's the big message you have to get out. And and also much less harmful. Much much less harmful. We are a digital media company for the cannabis industry, telling their stories in their words. There's nothing like having patients come back and say, I feel better. I am confident that Congress is, at the very least in this current Congress, by next year, going to make it legal for, uh, make it clearly legal for banks to take marijuana accounts, which is a big step forward. I also teach cannabis law at my alma mater, Suffolk Law. Oh, what? She's just getting started, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? My goodness, this is crazy. So then combining my background with chemistry and microbiology, I really wanted to bring that data-informed science into my cannabis practice, and I started working actually at a few dispensaries in Massachusetts. It's a whole new world of weed out there. I, I never thought I'd see the Red Sox win a World Series. <laughs> Three. Yeah. I never thought I'd see the Patriots win a Super Bowl, <laughs> let alone five. <laughs> this is tape. Okay. <laughs> we are ProCannabisMedia.com. Subscribe today. <laughs>